Dear friend, welcome to another episode of Self Love TV with me, Tamara Laporte from Willowing Arts. Hello! Welcome to another episode. It's episode four. <sighs> I managed. It's been a while, I know. Uh, it's been about three months ago since my last episode. Um, I feel a bit sad about that. I wish I'd done another one in between, but you know, life gets in the way, hey? So this happens. Anyway, mm, so today's um, episode, uh, I'd like to talk to you about the concept of um, feeling one's feelings or spending time with and paying attention to one's feelings and needs an inner experience as part of a self-care and self-love um, practice. <clears throat> so a little bit of a, a background or introduction uh, as to why I'd like to share this with you guys and why I think it's so pertinent and important that we do this um, and how it's part of a, I think, a healthy, healthy way of living. Um, many of us in many cultures, as we grow up, um, are kind of given the message that our feelings and our inner experiences and our emotions about like life and living are not necessarily something that you should be sharing with people or dwell upon or um, uh, talk, talk about a lot or even give attention. Most of the time we get different messages such as just get over yourself, grow a, grow a thicker skin, um, don't be so emotional is one of our favorite ones. Um, you know, these are kind of like really literal messages we get, but we also get more subtler messages where if you are, I don't know, crying, let's say, people are like a little bit like embarrassed for you or on your behalf, these kind of things. You know, generally in life or in, in maybe in, in, well, in, in this culture, I can only speak really for the culture I grew up in, is I, in general, didn't get the message that my feelings were a welcome topic or topic or even anything worthy of um, discussion or looking at or sitting with. The messages usually in my case, and I'm imagining is similar for many of you, were around uh, feelings, are a little bother feelings are a little bit bothersome, they are in the way of getting things done, um, don't, can't, please don't bother us with them, they are, you know, like uh, they're, they're kind of a little bit confrontational and in the way and st stressing everyone out and it's just, it's just, it's just it's weak and you make yourself vulnerable. All these kind of like stories and judgments and uh, approaches to the concept of feelings and feeling our feelings and that kind of thing. So <clears throat> um, I think, and I'm pretty sure this has been supported by quite a bit of research and many of the people in the psychology departments and, and that industry and field will uh, probably attest to um, or attest to that ignoring one's feelings and needs and inner experiences in the body and in your sort of emotional world, ignoring them, neglecting them, pushing them away, um, is pretty much detrimental for both our psychological health, emotional health and physical health. I'll pause there for a moment. <laughs> this might be completely new to you or this might be completely like, yeah, duh, Tam. <laughs> I see the ignoring or denying or like almost like repressing of emotions a little bit like you know when you have an electric current and it wants to run it wants to run it needs to run through its path it needs to run through its path if it's stopped halfway through you know how it sort of starts to build like a it starts to become this sort of like it needs like it can't go anywhere so it sits there as a tension ball and then it just sits there as a tension ball and because it can't run its current, uh -huh, I like the, the language, the, the pun, because it can't run its thing, 
it stops and sits there with a lot of tension. Like it just goes, you can see the little prickly, like the, the little uh, like uh, lightning bolt sort of, you know what I mean? Like this is the, the, the image I have in, in my mind of a feeling that occurs. So occur, a feeling occurs or arises in the body and then the human goes, oh, no, I don't like that feeling or I can't, I just, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to deny that. I'm going to push it down or, or ignore it or neglect it. And I, I think what happens is this feeling sits there and starts to do the same thing. It becomes a tension thing or it starts to fester or it starts to sort of mold or I don't know, rot, if you will. No, that sounds a bit overly dramatic but it sort of sits there and it doesn't get it doesn't it doesn't get to do what it needs to do and what it needs to do is to just simply run through you and I think the process of it running through you um, gets com gets to be completed once someone feels it or pays attention to it or sits with it if you will so when when a feeling occurs in my case so I'm just straight away I want to say that in my case I've been someone who for many many years and still do sometimes is someone who I repress or neglect or sort of dismiss my feelings like I find them a little bit like time consuming <laughs> and because they're time consuming and I have no time I go yeah yeah all right whatever I'm annoyed or frustrated or whatever I'm gonna just look at that later and I'm just pushing them away right now or sometimes deeper more emotional more just distressing feelings same story I'll go I don't want to go there it's too stressful or painful I'm just going to look over here and, and repress this so when a feeling gets um, dismissed or pushed away it doesn't get to be it doesn't get to run its course and therefore dissipate so the beautiful thing about feelings as uncomfortable as they might be when they are being felt and given just a little bit of attention around whatever it is that it is just needs to be usually a feeling just wants to be heard or seen I know it's not a person, it sounds a little bit like that, but I mean, a feeling just needs to kind of be given a little bit of time and attention and recognition or acknowledgement for, and, and for it to then be able to just run its current through you and dissipate. But quite often when we ignore it and when we don't surrender to the feeling or when we don't spend time with it, it sits there and it stays with us for very much longer because what it needs is to be seen and heard, but you're not giving it that attention, you see. So it just sits there and if it's years and years and years, it can, like, I think it can manifest physically in things like ulcers or other physical ailments, you see. And not just physical ailments but also just psychological ailments and sort of depression and and almost like a denying denying of what is truly alive and existing in you it's like it's there but it's not being given the space to just run run through you so for me I am working very hard and want to encourage other people on in my work on my classes and also just in general um, is to for people to 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 I encourage them to take more time or spend more time with their inner experiences of whatever is going on. I'm not so much discussing or talking about reacting to those feelings, so that's not really where I'm going with this particular video. Most of what I'm trying to talk about here is to pay attention to what lives inside of you, feeling-wise, needs-wise, and spend some time with it. Sorry about the creaking, that was my husband upstairs putting my children to, to sleep. <laughs> And uh, the house is a little bit creaky, so I paused for a moment there. Right, so I was saying um, that in my work and in general, I like to encourage people to spend some time, and myself I do this, my own self-care, as part of my own self-care practice, I try and pause and be present to my inner experience, my inner world, my inner aliveness, my inner... and, and um, any 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 of the inner experiences so we are more likely to want to run away from the uncomfortable frustrating anger sad sad feelings as opposed to the joyful ones so there's obviously a level there of a willingness or a or a, ne a need for being a little bit brave and courageous to go and be with those feelings because why you might wonder well why have we been running away from these feelings and these well that's you know <laughs> usually because they're like a little bit uncomfortable and it's natural for any uh human or any any animal i think i suppose as well it's natural to want to move towards pleasure and move away from pain or uh, discomfort that's only very natural but as i kind of alluded to before is that um and you you may have that you may have experiences in your life yourself is that when you, um, uh, you, you, you a feeling of let's say discomfort arises in you 
and you ignore it or repress it, in fact, it interestingly, it stays with you for longer than if you actually um, allow it to, to live in you almost straight away and acknowledge it and look at it and take a moment and sit with it. It dissipates more quickly than if you ignore it and, and resist it. So if you're resisting feelings, they're going to stay with you for longer than if you just simply allow them and surrender to them. So it's kind of like a really interesting paradox, or not quite a paradox, but something like it feels un not unnatural, but you want to naturally, I instinctively want to not experience pain or discomfort. So I just kind of, you, I think we're more naturally inclined to just go, no, this is not something I want to experience. And funnily enough, we create a longer term experience of the thing that we don't want to experience. And the paradox is that when you once you give in and you surrender to it, it will be like, thank you, okay, I can run my course now, I'm heard, or whatever I've been spent some time with, and it dissipates. That way. <laughs> it's with a little dance sound. <laughs> so this is the beauty and the weird thing and the paradox about this kind of process, is that you're thinking, it's, you're not just going to go, no, I don't want to, and then if you just give in, it'll disappear more quickly than if you actually resist it. Huh, weird, but seemingly true. This is my personal experience. So... Um, this might, if it's completely new to you, then then this is this might be quite uncomfortable and confusing and difficult and different because what you're used to is pushing things away or run away or even hide in other like distracting me mechanisms, escapism, etc., all that sort of stuff. So it might be very new or it might be again something you're already sort of experienced with and try and do. But but I find that cultivating a practice around it and becoming more and more aware and more conscious of my feeling experiences and basically going through the day in more of a slightly slower pace, at a slightly slower pace, and any time there is the ding dong bell of the doorbell that rings that that the moment you feel like any uncomfortable feeling or any kind of feeling is to immediately pause, sit for a moment. It doesn't you don't need like lots of time, but it, it um, you will need to just stop what you're doing for a second and just to close your eyes, scan your body, and even name it. You know, if you're very new to this kind of practice, you want to maybe be really explicit about describing to yourself what you're feeling, where it is, and breathe into it, and really go and embody your body. Because I'm also someone who sits very much up in my head a lot and I've had like for years now you know like working on like not being too much up in here and like really reconnected with my body physic physical body so I've gone into just describing really how I would go about feeling my feelings and paying attention to them um, and I have uh, before I actually do that I just want to say for my art friends and many of you are my art friends I have just published two free videos um, as part of this exercise which, which you is a free let is a free lesson that it was for, sorry that was first published on for radical wellness which is of course I ran two years ago all about health and well-being in relation and using the creative process to help us with that and um, there was a lesson on there where we where there's a creative creative art lesson there where um, I encourage you to write down and scan your body, feel your feelings and then write them down and process them through a creative process. But it's not necessary to do a creative process to actually feel your feelings, but for those of you who are interested in that, they can be really, it can be a really helpful tool. Uh, the videos are here is part one and here is part two. So enjoy that. Okay, so these are, um, this is a, like a creative exercise, a lesson actually, and it also shows you how to make a beautiful face and like layer with jelly plates and all this sort of stuff but um, the focus of that lesson is or is to like really work with your feelings okay but so anyway if you're not wanting to do any art lessons around surrounding it my um, suggestion would be around how to feel one's feelings or be with one's feelings sit with them feeling them might not be the right description just being with your feelings acknowledging them or validating them or somehow just paying attention to them and you know, noticing them you know that's all it really needs so I suggest that if you feel anything, the moment you get a whiff of a feeling or you're being triggered or something, you get an email you don't like, anything even little, you're, I don't know, you're tired, you're anything, practice this. Sit, take a moment, stop, stop anything and everything you're doing and sit still, close your eyes. Breathe into your feelings, breathe into your body and just scan your body a little bit. Go, what is in, what is in pain? What sensations are you feeling? And really feel my feelings usually happen in my sort of stomach, this heart stomach area. So I'll be might be describing it to myself as a heavy pit in my stomach, a lump in my throat. Maybe I'm on the verge of crying. 
I might have some thoughts going there. So if there's thoughts, oh, I really didn't like that email. I wish, oh, oh don't, don't try not to, if you can, berate yourself about anything that's going on, okay? If you can, meet this feeling or experience with as much neutrality or compassion as possible. Don't, like, if you've had a re-email and you realize that you've made a mistake, let's say, and that's why you're upset, Try to just, again, name the feelings and the experience in your body rather than going, oh, I should have done this better, I didn't do that right. Then if you do do that, go to the forgiveness video. <laughs> oh, I'll point that actually. Here, self-forgiveness. Here's my video on self-forgiveness. Okay? So, anyway, when you're feeling your feelings and you're noticing thoughts around why you're feeling sad or upset or frustrated or angry, try to meet those feelings or this experience, this internal experience with as much neutrality and compassion as possible. Like, um, I'm referring, I'm going to refer to yeah, the self-forgiveness one, perfectionism. Anyway, it's all related. Watch my other videos. They can all help uh, with any other stuff that comes up. But the particular exercise here is what you're really wanting to do is spend neutral, compassionate, just time noticing your bodily sensations, your emotional sensations without, without preferably any judgment of what that entails. Just, oh, feeling heavy in my stomach. I've got a joint ache here. It could be physical, really physical problems that you're not noticing, but also your emotional landscape. I feel heavy, I feel sad, I feel frustrated and despair. It can be as deep as that. You can go very deep. And in my other videos, I refer back to the concept of needs as well. Quite on, under, your, on, under your feelings are um, a, 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 a variety of what we might describe in MVC, nonviolent communication. Um, the life force and everything that we value are what we refer to as our needs or our values or our longings, the longings for. And these are things such as they are very, they are um, meant to be human, universal amongst all humans. Such things as I long for connection, peace, harmony, um, to be seen, to be heard, to be uh, loved. Um, there's a whole, the whole list. I think I'm linking in my other videos to the needs list. So if you can spend time, if, if you're finding it difficult to find the longings or the needs under the feelings, no worries, you know, if you can, then great, name those as well. So let's say, I'll give you an example. I received an email, someone was upset about something. They misunderstood me and I'm feeling really frustrated. So I'm going to talk you to the first. So I'll sit with myself, close my eyes, do some really deep breathing. I really become aware of my body. Then I notice here in my stomach a, a, a heaviness and a sadness, a real sadness. I'm also noticing, oh, some adrenaline rush has gone through my arms and I'm kind of like a little bit jittery. Oh, this is not, this is like that. And then I notice that there are some thoughts that are going on about, I wish I'd done that differently. I wish that person could understand what I meant and because they're misunderstanding me. So the deeper need might be to be really understood or to have a mutual understanding of whatever happened and to be seen and to be to be up, oh, to be seen for my intentions, for instance. I'm just giving you an example. So, like, and by, by, by really realizing that and connecting to all that and really feeling it, I, I can already feel that the feeling has started to get less and it's just starting to, to calm down. And I can feel more peace coming back in, into my, into my system. And that's just a little quick example of how I might go about being with my feelings just spending some time with them, naming some things, breathing into it, and trying to meet myself as much as possible with neutrality and compassion. And then the feeling has run its course and it's gone through me. It's just a thing that comes through you, but the moment you stop it, it stays in you and it won't dissipate. It won't just run its course. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so um, I hope that was in any way a little bit helpful and um, if you have any uh, suggestions or ideas as to what else one might do to feel or spend time with their feelings and really lovingly be with them I'd love to hear it in the comments section also if you have any um, suggestions as to what you'd like me to talk about on Self Love TV next do let me know I'd love to have some ideas around what guys what you guys like to hear me talk about with regards to self-care self-love self-connection practices I'd love to have a particular topic I can hone in on. So, um, oh, no, don't forget that I've got my other chat, my, my, my playlist, my playlist for Self Love TV is here, I think, if I can link to that. And then the two art lessons that are related to this particular type of processing, uh, creative processing of feelings and needs, can be found. Um, part one is here, 
part two is here. So enjoy that, uh, everyone. Thank you for paying. Thank you for watching this and paying attention and caring about this sort of stuff. And I wish you lots of love, lots of self care, lots of um, self connection and and. Uh, Inner peace, I suppose, is what I'm going for with the this series. Much love. Mm -hmm. Bye!